This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and today I have a new series that I'm going to be introducing to the channel called Inkscape Explained where I'm going to go over each individual feature uh, in Inkscape and explain how and why it works to the best of my ability. And I'm creating this series by popular demand because uh, many of you have asked me uh, if I could create a video just explaining what all of this does in Inkscape. And uh, I think that would be a good idea, but to actually create a video explaining every single feature in Inkscape and how it works, uh, it would be a video that would be several hours long probably, and it would take me a long time to, to create that and to plan it out and everything. So I decided what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through each individual feature one by one and create separate videos for it while I have the time. And just, just so you know, this is not going to be uh, in place of my uh, tutorials. I'll still be posting two tutorials a week. But in addition, I'll be posting maybe one or two of these uh, Inkscape Explained videos every week, uh, depending on how much uh, free time I have to create them. So uh, in the first one, I'm going to be explaining path functions. And by that, I mean up here when you go to path, all of these. I'm going to be explaining what all of these do, the, you know, the union, difference, intersection. And uh, let, me, let me get started. I'm going to create a circle. And then I'll create a square. And then I'll create some text. I'll just write text, just like that. And you know what? Let me open up the, um, the, the fill and stroke menu. And I'll take the circle, I'll make it red. <clears throat> I'll bring the opacity down in half. I'll take the square, I'll make the square blue. I'll bring the opacity of that down in half. And the text, I'll just leave it as it is. So let me take this first, um, this circle right here and go to path. And the first one is object to path. Now, if I actually click on that, you're not going to be able to see what happened there. It doesn't, doesn't look any different, but I'm going to show you what happens. Uh, let me go back to the circle tool. Inkscape recognizes this is a circle. You can change, you know, you can change the, um, the radius of the circle and everything like that. Uh, in order for us to have separate nodes on each of these points that we can manipulate further, we have to convert that to a path. So let me go to path, object to path. And I'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And you'll see we have all these different nodes here that we could play with. I could take this one and move it out there. Take this, move it there. Move this one in like that. And, uh, just to give you an idea. Just to give you the... Um, that's pretty much the basis of how that works. And to further illustrate how it works, I'm going to take the text. And let me enlarge this a little bit. So as far as Inkscape knows, this is just text. I mean, I can go back to the text tool and I could add more text to it and numbers and stuff. But in order to have this with separate nodes that I could edit and manipulate individually, I'll have to convert that to a path. So I'll get a path, object to path, and that's no longer text as far as Inkscape knows. I can go to the text tool and I can't add any text or subtract any text to it it's because it's now a path. So let me go back to the select tool and let me ungroup it because once you convert it to a path, Inkscape gives it to you with all of the letters grouped together. So you'll have to click ungroup to ungroup each individual letter. And then I'll go to the edit paths by nodes tool. And let me zoom in and show you. You could take each one of these nodes and you can now manipulate this thing however you'd like. You could take that node, make it rounded if you'd like. So that's how that works. Let me get rid of that. What's next? Path. Stroke to path. Okay, so let me make a copy of this. A stroke is an outline that you could put around an object. And um, let me put a, an outline around this object. I'll go to the Stroke Paint tab. I'll click the blue button to turn it on. And it created an outline around that object. I'm going to make that outline green, like that. And under the Stroke Style tab, you could change the thickness of it. You could use a, you could be a one-point stroke. This is relative to pixels. You could change it to inches, millimeters, centimeters, whatever you want. Let me go back to 25 pixels, and I'll go back to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And you can see we could edit this the same way we could edit the circle before with the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. But what if I want to edit the uh, the stroke even further, that outline? What if I want to, instead of just moving the whole side of it like this, what if I want to take the left edge of that green stroke and pull that out, and then take the right edge of that green stroke and pull that out? I'll have to convert that stroke into a path before I can do that. So I'll go to Path, Stroke to Path, and you'll see we now have separate nodes for each side that we can edit. just like that. So let me undo all that. 
And what's next? Path. Trace bitmap. Okay, so this is for uh, raster images. Let me let me take this and get rid of this. Let me p bring a raster image in here. I'm just going to hit Control I to import, and I'll click on this wood image. I'm just going to bring this wood image into Inkscape. This is a raster image, a photograph of a, a piece of wood. And what the trace bitmap does is it pretty much traces a vector over a raster image. So I'll go to Path, Trace Bitmap. And it gives you all these different options to use here. I like to use color quantization. And if you click update, it'll show you a preview window. Everything in that preview window that's black would be what's created a vector out of. Let me show you. Click OK. And as you can see, it took that image and it created a black vector uh, object going according to the, uh, the piece of wood there. And you could edit this just like you would any other vector object, any other path in Inkscape. You could even go to the Edit Pads by Nodes tool and edit those pads and uh, those nodes individually. And let me delete that. Now let's say we want to invert that. Actually, let's say we want the um, that white space in there. Maybe we want that to be the path, and we want this black area to be uh, the negative space. What we could do is let's click on this image, and we'll go to Invert and click Update, and you'll see it inverted it. Click OK. And there you have it. You now have a vector object um, based on the wood grain. So that's how that works. Let me get rid of that. We're done with this. Let me get out of that menu. Get rid of that. Uh, what's next in the list? Path Union. Okay, so let me take these two objects right here. With them both selected, I'll go to Path Union. It took those two objects and it unified them together into a single object with all of these different paths and one color that you could you know that you'd fill in and you know work with it however you'd like okay now let me select those both and go to path difference and when I go to difference it's gonna take the object that's on top and use it to punch a hole through the object beneath it since the uh, since the uh, the blue square is on top it's gonna take the blue square and punch a shape through this red circle the size of that square let me show you path difference just like that so we now have an object with a different shape like that so now if we want to do the opposite let's say we want to take this red circle and punch a shape through the blue square what we have to do is take this red circle raise that above the blue square and then select them both and go to path difference and that's how that works okay so let's see what's next path intersection okay let me select those both and what the intersection tool does, it just takes the um, uh, the area of the two shapes where they intersect and creates an object out of that. So we'll just go to Path, Intersection, and we now have an object created out of the, uh, the intersecting space of those two objects. Let me select those both and go to Path, um, Exclusion. Exclusion works similarly, but in reverse. It excludes the intersecting area. So I'll click on Exclusion. And it created an object out of the two objects, but with the intersecting space missing. And that's negative space in there. That's not a um, that's not a white object. Let me show you. I'll take that and lower that beneath that. As you can see, that's a negative space in there. It's transparent. So let me get back to what I was doing. Okay. So let's see what's next here. I'll select those both. I'll go to path uh, division. What division does is it takes the object on top and creates a separate shape out of the object beneath it, out of the intersecting area. So I had that, that red circle right here. I'll select those both, go to path, um, division, and it creates a separate shape out of it like that. And that's not a tool I really use very often. I really haven't had a need for it. Um, and again, it goes relative to what's on top. So if we want to do the opposite, we'll have to take this square and put that on top of the red circle. And then we can go to Path, Division. And again, we have a separate shape within that circle made out of the blue square. So that's how that works. Now let me select both of those and let's go to Path, um, Cut Path. Not really sure what that does. I guess that works similarly. Oh, okay, I see. Um, 
Yeah, I really, I'm really not sure what the cut path does that's really useful. It looks like it, it takes the two, and it works similar to the, um, the division one, but uh, it, it doesn't have any curves involved, and it, it makes it so it has no fill or anything. I'm, re I'm really not sure what this tool does, to be honest with you. If you do know, feel free to enlighten me. I just know that I haven't had a use for it, so uh, let's see what's next. Um, combine. Okay, so I'll select those both and I'll go to combine. And you know what? Let me actually undo that. I'm going to create a copy of this. Combine works very similar to union. Let me go to path, union, and it, com and it combine those together into one object. And then I'll, combine, I'll take those two and I'll go to path, combine. And again, we have the same result, but what's the difference between these two? Well, if we go to the edit paths by nodes tool and we click on the first one where we did union, You'll see this is there's no there's no other information in here. You you didn't know that this was a square or a circle because there's no intersecting points or anything here. This is just a a, a solid separate object. But if we go over to the one where we did combine and we click on it, Inkscape saved some of that information. So you could see it's still recognized as a circle and a square. It turned it into one object, but it saved a little more of that data. So you know that there's still a square in here. We have that node right here of the bottom left square. We don't have that in here though. So union, unifying something is a more, um, it's, it's, like, it's like a more final approach to doing something. Whereas this, this is temporary. And I don't use the combine often, the, the combine function too often because I usually just use group and ungroup. So, uh, but that's, that's how that works. Let me get back to my, okay. So what's next? We're going to path, break apart. Okay, let me, create something new here. I'm going to take this red circle and I'm going to make a few copies of it like that. And I'm going to click and drag over all of those and I'm going to unify them together. We'll go to path, union. And let's say you have a vector object like this, a path that's like a, a bunch of different shapes, but it's all it's, it's all connected together. You want to be able to color in each shape. Like let's say you want to make this one green and that one blue. You can't really do that because it's registered as a single object. But if we go to path, break apart, Inkscape breaks it up into different little pieces. But if you notice, it didn't break this into different little pieces because this is all combined now. We did union instead of combined. So this is all, you can't break these apart now because it's finalized. But these ones, as I mentioned, we can make this blue and we can make this red. So that's how break apart works. Let me get rid of those. Let's see what's next. Path, um, inset. All right, let me take this red circle and I'll duplicate it and create a green circle. So we have a green circle above the red circle. Now with that green circle uh, selected, I'll go to path, inset. And it pretty much just took that image and made it smaller all around the perimeter, just like that. An outset, path outset, it works the same way, only in reverse, so it makes it larger like that. And if we want to do path dynamic offset, it does the same thing, only it gives you a handle to scale it up and down with. So it makes it a little more, you have a little more control over the result you get, which I really like. I like using that. So let me get rid of that. Now if we go to path linked offset, it does the same thing as dynamic offset, only it creates a separate copy. So let me go to linked offset and I'll turn that green so we can see it. And it's actually beneath the red circle. So let me raise that up above the red circle. I'll go back to the edit paths by nodes tool. And again, we have this node that we can edit and play with. I'm going to make that larger like that. And I'll put this over here. And what happened was these two shapes right here, these two objects are linked together. So if I do something to this object right here, the same thing's going to happen to that object accordingly. So it's pretty much the same thing as dynamic offset as, um, yeah, as dynamic offset, only it links it together with the original. You see, that's how that works. So let me get rid of that. Let's see what's next path. Um, simplify. Okay, so let me take the square. I'll duplicate that. Um, hmm. Let me go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And again, Inkscape is recognizing this as a square. I could round the corners and, and play with this and everything. So in order to 
convert that to a path so I have nodes here. I'm going to go to Path, Object to Path, and I'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, and I now have all these nodes here. Now I'm going to click and drag over those nodes and add new nodes in there, just to show you as an example. Let's say you've been working in Inkscape and you've been putting some time into creating some kind of object or something. And by the time you're done creating it, it has all these nodes in here. Well, you can go to Path, Simplify, and Inkscape will get rid of as many as, as many of those nodes as, they, as it possibly can without changing the original shape of the object. So the benefit of, of, of having an object with as few nodes as possible is that it's, uh, it'll be a smaller size file. It won't, um, you know, it, it won't slow down your computer as much. If you don't have uh, much memory in your computer, having an object with a lot of nodes in it can really slow you down sometimes. So that's, um, that's one of the benefits of using that. So what's next? Path. Reverse. I honestly have no idea what reverse does, but if you do, again, feel free to enlighten me in the comments. Um, and Path Effect Editor. That is, uh, that's something entirely different. We go to Path Effect Editor and we're going to get a whole new menu here. So that's going to be a separate video. I think maybe the next video I'll go over the Path Effect Editor or maybe in an upcoming video sometime soon. And again, the, the two options beneath that paste path effect and remove path effect. Those are both relevant to the path effect editor and I'll, co I'll cover all three of these in another video. So um, hopefully that gives you some clarity about what these, uh, what these functions are and, and how and why they work. But if you have any questions for me, just let me know and I'll be glad to help you out. As always, thank you for watching.